guys, it's Darren with East Woodland Survival. Thanks for stopping by today. Today I've got a neat little project for you to do, and that is tulip poplar baskets. Super simple to do, super easy to make, and right now is the perfect time of year to peel the bark. So stay with me, and I'll show you how to do this. Now these are tulip poplar trees, and you can kind of understand why they're called tulip poplar, because the leaf looks kind of like a tulip. What I'm looking for today is a small tree. I don't want to go a really big one today. Uh, we're gonna, just going to do a simple basket. And I've got a couple of trees that have kind of volunteered back here in the back. Now this tulip poplar right here will be perfect for what I want to do. Now you can do this one or two ways. You can actually strip the bark off the tree. And if you do it properly, you're not going to kill the tree. It's actually going to live and I'll show you that process. You can actually cut the tree down if you want, but uh, you know, I want this tree to live and grow. You can see where I've pulled some bark off this trees before. And it's a tulip poplar and it's perfectly healthy. Nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, anytime that you make a hole in the bark though, you're actually, you know, taking a chance of getting some kind of microbe, some kind of insect infestation or something into the tree. When you select this tree, what you're after is, is your length that you're going to peel off of this tree is going to be half the length of your basket. And also, the width that you cut off of this tree is going to be the width of your basket. So we're going to come in here and I'm going to switch to the GoPro. We're just going to take our knife. And as I said, if you do this responsibly, you're not really going to hurt this tree. And thanks, tree, for letting me use your bark. Uh, there's only a couple times a year you can do this, and that's usually uh, late spring, early summer. It's going to be wet underneath this bark. Now I'm just going to make a little wedge to help aid me get this bark off. And if you can see, it's got little pin, like little needle pieces here. That's where a limb has been, so be really careful when you're peeling this off. So now that we've got this turned out like this, we're going to do a little football shape here. And what I like to do is just mark kind of like the center of where I want my basket to be, sort of like that. And we're just going to draw like a little football right through the bark. That's going to be the bottom of our basket. And if you'll cut just a little notch in each corner, another tip I picked up from James, it helps to fold it a little bit better. And just start working it up right along that line that we just cut. And this will form our basket. It started to rain on me, so I had to move my operation back up here under the shed at the house. And we're just going to stitch this side together today. And I'm going to show you an easy way you can do it in the woods, especially if you've got a multi-tool that has an awl, or any knife really that has an awl on it. Very, very handy little item to have. We're just going to come in, and I'm just going to make a series of holes about a half inch in from the side all the way up and then about a half inch down because I'm going to put a uh, ring around the top of this. Uh, probably going to use river cane or something around the top. We we'll probably put a handle on it. We could use whatever grapevine, whatever you wanted to use for a handle. You could also just use string or whatever. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in. And you could actually leave this thing opened up if you want while you're doing it. Come in about a half inch and just start twisting your knife in like so to create a hole. You don't want to push so hard that it splits the bark. You're just kind of make it a hole, just like so. And you're going to do that all the way across. And the best thing to do to line them up is just do like that, line it up. For the other side, and you're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and drill our holes up on both sides and across our top. Now you can use about anything to stitch these up with. I mean, this is some uh, hemp. This is some hand-woven tulip poplar bark inner strands. 
You could use bank line or jute or just about anything to stitch the sides of them up. I think I'm going to try to use my handmade lines today and make this truly uh, aboriginal. So I'm just going to start by stitching up the sides. I'm going to use my awl to push my cordage through. I'm going to start from the back side and work my way up. And then we're going to fold this over and stitch through the other side. Now I like to do mine straight across. My stitch is straight across like so. You can do an X however you really want to do it. Just like, a, like you lace up a shoe. You can do it however you want to do it. So while I'm doing this, I'm going to do the other side at the same time. If you made your holes good enough, you won't have to poke them through. Unfortunately, to be in a hurry and to do it on film, I did not take my time. So now I'm paying for it. So we'll go ahead and lace up this side and get this thing together and then I'll show you how to lace the top and get the hoop on it. And we'll put a handle on it too. Alright, we got our sides stitched up. Don't cut these off because you're going to use these to tie your handle in. So if you got any leftover string, uh, leave that there so you can uh, use that. You don't have to use natural cordage. Like I say, you can use any kind of thing. Even leather works great on these. So I'm going to start working the handle into it on the inside. And this is just some grapevine, and you can use just about anything. I just twisted it, and we're just going to start working in the end. And I left this to where I can actually tighten it up a little bit more. So I'm just going to work these down through. Now you can do this also uh, as you're making the basket. You can work this in. I always find it easier just to go back and work them in than trying to uh, stitch it in at the same time. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Then we're going to tighten it up really good with our cordage, basically like so. Now I'm getting ready to put my loop on the outside. By putting my handle on the inside, I don't have to worry about my loop going over the top. Now this is just some grapevine I've got twisted up around, and we're going to use that to put the hoop around the top of our basket. And it's pretty simple to do. All we're going to do is just take this and lay it around like so. And we're going to stitch it just with a, with a whip stitch over the top. Now you can tie, there's all kinds of ways to tie these handles in to this basket. You can use a God's eye weave in this and all kinds of other things. We're just going to kind of throw it together today to make it functional. So once you get that hoop tied on, it's going to help keep everything sprung out. You can go back in if you need and clean off any these little pieces that are sticking out like this. Retuck them underneath. Just all kinds of crazy things. But you can see how this is just stitched on. You can also go back and restitch if you want a tighter, tighter basket top. And I'm going to continue to tie up this side right here a little bit to hold this handle in. It's a little loose. So this is our finished basket. It's 100% natural. Uh, even the cordage, everything on there. Grapevine handle. Everything ready to pick berries. Ready to do whatever you need a basket for. This is another one I made the other day. It's a little different. I actually used a sail needle and stitched the side of this. This is more like a quiver, but uh, a basket. But you can make a quiver, an arrow quiver, exactly the same way. And you can see I stitched the handle on the outside of this one. Just like so. This is a piece of river cane that's uh, the top of the basket around the top for the loop. And just a piece of grapevine. So, two different baskets, let them dry out, and they will serve you quite well. well guys, this is Darren with East Woodland Survival. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the woods.